Hi, I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I just finished a great steak dinner. And now for a bowl of peach cobbler. Mm -mm. I'm at my favorite truck stop where they have top quality service and excellent food. Kind of seems like a great place to talk about a produce hauler from Florida. Started in 1938 by Nathan Greenstein, a produce broker in Pompano Beach, Florida. Moving on to 1948, Greenstein Company was moving produce and other perishable products from Florida to destinations east of the Mississippi. Soon, service was extended to the northern states. From the beginning, Nathan Greenstein created a family business. Using owner-operator trucks to pull company trailers was a common practice back then. It saved the company lots and lots of money by not buying the expensive tractor. But it does lead to a variety of tractors in the fleet. The company was noted for the tractors that they used. Ford, Mack, International, Kenworth, and Freightliners were the preferred power units for Greenstein Trucking. Mm. They have excellent co mm. They have excellent cobbler here. Greenstein was known as the elite fleet. No one could come close. DCP then made a beautiful Peterbilt 352 to commemorate this great company. I will be reviewing the DCP Pete model during the review portion of this video. Shindell Greenstein took over the trucking company from her father when he retired. During her 41 years at the helm, Greenstein Trucking became a well-known national firm. The company, true to its founding, specialized in hauling fresh produce from Florida to markets on the eastern seaboard. On return trips, the company's trucks backhauled dairy products to Florida markets. <laughs> Talk about feeding both places with necessary goods. How did Greenstein attract such an elite fleet of trucks and drivers for their runs? Any guesses? Well, they had something known as box rate. Hmm. Hmm. Well, what is box rate? Box rate is just what it sounds like depending on the specific kind of produce being shipped. Box rate paid more than truckload, flat rate, or other pay methods. So, the rate per box was equal to the size and weight of the box calculated by the mileage to a particular city. Box rate started at the Pompano Beach Farmers Market, over to Bell Glade, then up to the Fort Pierce Farmers Market, and finally over to the Plant City Strawberry Fields. Whew. Box rate was getting paid by the box. The more boxes you could put in the trailer box, the more the load paid. This rate didn't end with deregulation in the 1980s, but it continued into at least the 90s. Since produce is an exempt commodity, Motor Carrier Authority was not and still is not needed to transport produce. Box piece rates, as well as weight related rates per hundred pounds, most often, and is usually on potatoes, onions, and watermelons, were a lot more common in the 70s and 80s. By the 90s, 
the trend was headed towards flat rates. And they eventually gained favor with both the trucking and produce industries. It must have been an interesting time though, especially hauling mixed loads, where boxes were different sizes, weights, and rates. If you didn't know what you were doing, you could end up with a cheap load really fast. You also had to consider ice on loads, like sweet corn. Corn generated heat in the shucks, so once it was loaded, the driver had to head over to the ice house to have crushed ice blown in over the load, followed by water to help wash it down into the load. On a typical load from Florida, the driver had to put three to 5,000 pounds of ice and water on several times before reaching his destination. And this is the DCP by First Gear, Peterbilt 352, pulling a 40-foot reefer van for Greenstein Trucking. It is in their smaller DCP by First Gear box with a two-piece blister. Item number is 60-1428. It is Fallen Flags number 46. And here it is, guys, out of the package. Isn't that a sharp-looking truck? I love this trailer when they chrome plate it. It looks really, really sharp when they chrome plate it. And then the 352 over here, it looks pretty sharp. It's a great paint scheme. The green from Greenstein and the cream striping, really sharp. The trailer here is that beautiful vintage reefer van. It's chrome plated on the sides. You can see my reflection in it. They put the American flag banner, just like on the picture of the real one, which I'm gonna show here in a minute. And then they've got Greenstein down here, just like in the picture. It's got the silver band across the bottom, chrome reefer fuel tank down there. It's got chrome tin hole wheels and soft rubber tires. Marker lights up top. Underneath, you can see that we have the spare tire carrier and a spare tire, and you do see the air brake canisters on the rear axles, working suspension, and the bars where they would slide, but it doesn't really slide. Black bracing on the landing gear, and of course, it is the screw down type landing gear that DCP trailers are famous for. Now you can see here on the side, one of the flaws with these chrome. You can see the fingerprints. That's where I just touched it to set it up. Now what you got to do with those is you got to wipe that off very quickly and get them so you don't have them leaving markings right there. On the side of the trailer here, on this corner, we have a trailer number. It says trailer number 149. On the front, marker lights up top, the Thermo King Reefer unit, which they painted the body of it in, Greenstein Green, and it has Thermo King logo and Thermo King written out there. And the grill area is all silver. Also down lower, there is the battery boxes and the airline hookup places. Over in this corner, there's another 149 Tampo. And on this side, we have a door outlined. It's a Tampo of a door with cam locks and the hinges. The hinges are tampoed in silver. The door is outlined in black. There is no actual door on this trailer. See, you can see it like that. When I tip it up this way, the reflection is better. You can see that very well. There is no door on this uh, trailer tooling, so this is the best they can do. It also has another little uh, access port right there. Then you can see the American flag and the green sign there. Top is just silver on the trailer. Round on the back, there is no graphics on the door, nothing on the mud flaps, brake lights and turn signals are tampoed, the upper marker lights are tampoed, and you can see very well that these doors are just chrome plated, mirror chrome finish, which looks really nice in this size. They do open to reveal the interior, which is the reefer interior with the insulated walls and insulated floor really really nice i'm a big fan of this trailer i think it looks great but as i said make sure you wipe off any fingerprints if you leave them if you touch the chrome because it will etch that chrome and i don't want you to ruin your trailer now what we're going to do is look at the tractor this is the 352 with the 
86 inch single bunk tooling cab. It's a really, really nice cab, but I gotta ask, I really gotta ask DCP, because I'm gonna show the real picture right here. Isn't that sharp? That's the real truck that they modeled. It's obvious, you can see up on the front corner, it has the 149, just like this model has. But do you notice one major difference in that truck versus this one? Oh man, that truck has the 110 inch double bump, which in most cases, that's a good, this would have been a good compromise. You know, I mean, most models we can't get 100% exact because, you know, we don't necessarily have the right tooling, the right everything. However, with this particular 352 tooling, they have a 110 inch bunk. Why didn't First Gear use the 110 inch bunk cab for this tool? It's obvious the picture that they got, they got the numbers, everything off of that cab and off of that picture. But so why didn't they just use the 110 inch like in the picture? That would have been perfect. It also would have made this striping look like it's not compressed. It looks like it's just compressed down just a little bit, bit too much. Up top, you've got your air conditioner your air horns your roof lights air intake single exhaust just like in the picture i mean everything on this truck is set up just like in that picture except for the cab double bunk this one has the single bunk and i wish they had done the double bunk now look at here it's got the loop grab bar step which i'm not a fan of in the model because this has a tendency to break so be careful with these because that does break but it does replicate the real one very well 10 hole chromes front and rear soft rubber tires peterbilt logo tampos there and turn signals round front we've got green stein on the bumper individual jewel style headlights in the chrome bezels chrome grill big peterbilt logo the 149 and you can see the striping come down interior is in there hard plastic clear windows and the windshield wipers are tampoed in now let's look real close here. I see one more problem with this. Look at these graphics. Isn't this a beautiful looking truck? You can see all the numbers are up there on the sleeper, weights, ICCs, everything it needs. But look at the logo on the door. Trucking does not have an H in it. How did First Gear make that mistake? That is a simple one trucking has an n not an h and they did it on both doors the graphics look cool but the spelling they really needed to work on this truck in my opinion while greenstein was a great company a big company and it was out there and they had plenty of information on it they had plenty of pictures of the trucks because there was a lot of them out there but to me, DCP, this one was actually probably one of the worst releases I've seen simply because of you used the wrong cab and you misspelled the logo on the door. How do you misspell the logo on the door? Now, under the hood, we have a detailed white inline six. All the detail is there. It's just a few simple things if they'd used the right cab, it would have been an awesome, much better truck. I'd understand it if they didn't actually have that tooling, but they do have that tooling for the 110 inch cab. And there's really no excuse at all for misspelling the company name on the door of the truck. That is crazy. Trucking is such an easy word to spell. How did that get through any quality control? So with all of the problems with this truck, I think that this one was a miss for DCP. However, factory mistakes and mistakes that factories make tend to go up in value. So there's a good chance that this one will go up in value. And I got a report on tips for value in your collection and how you can make sure you get items that raise the value of your collection. And it's linked down below. Grab it right now and watch the rest of the video. Because <sighs> in a way, while I'm disappointed in this truck, I do believe it's going to go up simply because of the mistake that they made typing it 
the name out on the door. That's going to be a DCP blunder that people are going to look at. Whoa, that's actually kind of cool. And it's okay that they didn't use the right cab. It would have been so much better if they had, but that's okay. And this, my friends, is the 164 scale die cast Peterbilt 352 86-inch bunk with the 40-foot vintage reefer van trailer for Greenstein Trucking, part of the DCP by First Gear Fallen Flag series. Some trucking history needs to be documented or we're going to lose it. For instance, what do you mean you couldn't just buy a truck and go to work? What do you mean? It was illegal to cut rates? <laughs> many, many other things about trucking the drivers and office workers know about the trucking industry will be lost if they are not told and documented. If you know something about the trucking industry and want to share it, please leave it in the comments down below. Also, make sure to grab my free checklist on the DCP by First Gear Fallen Flag series to make sure you have all of them in your collection. Get it with another link down below. Thanks for watching everyone. Please go on and smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell so that you don't miss any of my future Fallen Flags videos. Also, use the playlist link below to watch my other Fallen Flag series videos. I'm Logan, and this has been another episode of Toy Talk. See you in the next video. Hmm. You just can't beat the cobbler here at the Broken Wheel Truck Stop.